name is Vince Andriani, Service Manager in charge of IT here at The Answer Company. I'd like to welcome everyone to The Answer Company's Propel 2021 Virtual Client Event. Cybersecurity has been a leading concern for most organizations, especially in the past year. Most organizations place great resources towards the electronic security of their systems, but fail to address their greatest asset, the employee. Although businesses may feel that their employees would not be fooled by a cybersecurity attack, cybercriminals still use this attack method as it continues to be successful. Therefore, in today's session, we will explore cybersecurity awareness training. Again, welcome everyone to today's session on cybersecurity awareness training. In the past year, many organizations had to pivot quickly to allow for employees to work from home. This forced many IT departments to focus their efforts towards working from home and away from security. Combine this with the world of always on internet connectivity, and we have found that malicious entities are more active than ever, and their biggest target has been the small to medium business, as well as their employees. In today's session, we will cover why cybersecurity awareness training is important, who should receive security awareness training, how people are being targeted, and some tips to help you protect yourself what security awareness training looks like, and how to pick the best security awareness training platform. So why is security awareness training so important? Well, let's take a look at some information first. From a report provided by Identity Force, between January and September of 2019, there were over 7.9 billion data records exposed, a 33% increase from the same time in 2018. Although hackers are obvious culprits in uncovering this data, Oftentimes, they had a helping hand from human error resulting in data breach. In another report from Security Magazine, cybercriminals went from a spray and pray effort, where they tried to hit everyone they could, to a targeted and sophisticated plan of attack. Criminals started going after particular companies, doing recon and gaining access to their systems via targeted spear phishing attacks. And lastly, from Dell EMC, 76% of Canadian companies experienced data disruptions in one year. The average cost of data loss exceeded $1.1 million US. There are many reasons for a cyber attack. Things like fame, retaliation, or an aggressive attack to take down an organization. But the primary goal for most cyber criminals is to extort money from unsuspecting people. Technology alone cannot protect you from cyber attacks. Cyber criminals, otherwise known as bad actors or attackers, will look for the weakest link in the security chain. And do you know which is the weakest link in your security chain? It's the employee. Yes, the human is the weakest link within most organizations' security plan. Security awareness training is crucial for the organization, as people are the first line of defense. And if they are cybersecurity savvy, then you're, you considerably reduce the chances of your systems being breached. So you may think to yourself, an attacker would not be interested in me. I'm just a small business. They only go after big organizations. Well, I'm here to tell you that this is not true. While it is true that an attacker may extort larger amounts of money from larger organizations, these organiza organizations typically have more mature security plans, and that typically includes security awareness training. So why would you be targeted? They may be looking for things like your credit card or banking information, or even more valuable inf information like your medical information. They may want to utilize your computer power to help spread ransomware, or to hide their location by using your computer to hack into another organization's computer system. Or they may be looking for user or email credentials to use your email and spread even more attacks to all your contacts and their contacts and so on and so on. Who should receive cybersecurity awareness training? Well, the real question is, who shouldn't receive this training? Should employees receive this training? Absolutely. How about business owners? Definitely. Think about parents. Well, yes, of course. Kids? Yes, they should. How about your seniors or your grandparents? Definitely, they should also learn it. So the real answer is everyone. Yes, everyone should be learning cybersecurity training. Some organizations would think this is strange, but even the IT team should receive security awareness training. We all get complacent in our day-to-day -day work, and that can lead to security breaches, especially now with the increase in employees that work from home. So I can't emphasize this enough. Everyone. Everyone gets cybersecurity awareness training. What about kids and seniors? Is a business responsible for training them? Well, the answer is yes and no. While we are focusing on the employee within an organization, 
and it's important for your staff to take the lessons learned within cybersecurity awareness training and apply them when working from home. And then take it a, a step further. They should take the lessons learned and teach their family the best practices for their own personal devices. So who should get security awareness training? Again, everybody. As stated earlier, cyber criminals or bad actors are targeting the weakest security portion of any organization. And that is the least trained employee. You may be wondering how these people are being targeted. For the most part, this is done via email. But there are many other ways that are being utilized. Some of these are through email, utilizing phishing or spear phishing, or over the phone using a direct call, or receiving text offering refunds, prizes, or package deliveries. And then there's social engineering. This is not so much a platform, but more of a way of attack. As one of the most popular attack types, phishing scams are by email, but can also be by text message campaigns aimed at creating a sense of urgency, curiosity, or fear in victims. It then lures them into revealing sensitive information, clicking on links to malicious websites, or opening attachments that contain malware. An example would be an email sent to a user of an online service that alerts them of a policy violation requiring immediate action, such as a password change. It typically includes a link to a fake website that looks nearly identical in appearance to the legitimate version, and then prompts an unsuspected user to enter their current credentials and the new password. Once the form has been submitted, the information is sent to the attacker, who then in turn can access the system. Spear phishing, on the other hand, is a more targeted version of the phishing scam, whereby an attacker chooses specific individuals and or organizations. They then tailor their message based on characteristics, job positions, and contacts belonging to their victims to make their attacks less conspicuous. Spear phishing requires much more effort on behalf of the bad actor, and may take weeks, months to pull off. They're much harder to detect and have better success rates if done skillfully. A spear phishing campaign might involve a cyber criminal who is impersonating an organization's IT consultant, sending an email to one or more employees. It's worded and signed exactly as the consultant normally does, thereby deceiving recipients into thinking it's an authentic message. The message prompts recipients to change their password and provides them with a link that redirects them to a malicious page where the attacker now captures their credentials. Phishing is by far the most common attempt at infiltrating a system. And as stated earlier, email is the predominant delivery method. This is because phishing emails can easily circumvent applications that are designed to identify such threats. Now this is one I'm pretty sure all of you have experienced. Those annoying calls with a robotic voice pretending to be IRS or CRA. This is a very common scam, especially around tax time. Someone will call you pretending to be from either the United States Revenue Service or the Canadian Revenue Agency. They may tell you that you owe taxes or that you're in trouble with the tax department and that you must send payment or give them your credit card or banking information. Most of the time, they make this even worse by using scare tactics like the authorities have already been dispatched. Then there's the calls from the cyber criminals stating they're from Microsoft or maybe a reputable antivirus software developer. They will tell you that your computer has been infected and they are calling to help you remove the virus. This type of scam typically leads to the attacker asking you to install some remote access software, at which point they do one of two things. The first one is that they actually infect your computer and then ask you to pay for an antivirus program. The second one is they extort money from you by tricking you into thinking that they're going to give you a refund, then refunding you too much money at which point they'll be asking you to pay back the, ref the extra money by going to get gift cards and giving them the codes. Probably the worst targeted attack is the traveling or grandparent scam. In this type of scam, a caller pretends to be a close friend or a relative in trouble. They might ask you to send money because they're in an accident or have been injured or been arrested or because they've been robbed. Like other scams, this is likely just a way for scammers to get access to your bank account they often target seniors, but anyone of any age can be a victim of this kind of scam. You look at your phone, you have a text notification. Great news, you have a refund coming. Notifications involving money owed to you are enticing, aren't they? They state things like our records show that you've been overpaid for fill in the blank. Kindly supply your banking, routing and account number to receive your refund. 
But don't fall for this kind of scam. Even better, you've won a prize. Winning an unexpected prize sounds great in theory. However, being notified of winning a contest you didn't enter is a dead giveaway of a phishing text. If you're not sure whether an offer is authentic, contact the business directly to verify. You receive another text. You have a package delivery waiting. With deliveries from Amazon and FedEx so commonplace now, a text message regarding a package or order would be easy to overlook. While shippers do send legitimate shipping update texts, they never ask for personal information or money to complete the delivery. When you receive a text type scam, you'll be asked to go to a website. Once in that website, you'll be asked for information like your bank information or your credit card information. They'll be asking for fees. And once they have your fees, you can expect not to receive your refund. The prize that you have won will never arrive. And the package that you're waiting for will be in transit forever. Social engineering is a term defined as a broad range of malicious activities accomplished through human interactions. It uses psychological manipulation to trick users into making security mistakes or giving away sensitive information. Social engineering attacks happen in one or more steps. A perpetrator first investigates the intended victim to gather necessary background information, such as potential points of entry and weak security protocols. These are needed to proceed with the attack. Then the attacker moves to gain the victim's trust and provide stimuli for subsequent actions. These break security practices such as revealing sensitive information or granting access to critical resources. What makes social engineering especially dangerous is that it relies on human error, rather than vulnerabilities in software and operating systems. Mistakes made by legitimate users are much less predictable, making them harder to identify and stop than a malware-based intrusion. As its name implies, Baiting attacks use a false promise to pique a victim's greed or curiosity. They lure users into traps that steal their personal information or inflicts their systems with malware. Victims pick up the bait out of curiosity and insert it into their work or home computers. This results in automatic malware installation. Baiting scams don't necessarily have to be carried out in the physical world. Online forms of baiting consist of enticing ads that lead to malicious sites or that encourage users to download a malware-infected application. The common scareware example is a legitimate-looking pop-up banner appearing on your browser while you're surfing the web. This displays such text as, your computer may be infected with harmful spyware programs. It either offers an install tool, often malware-infected, or will direct you to a malicious site where your computer becomes infected. Scareware is also distributed via spam email that doles out bogus warnings or makes offers for users to buy worthless, harmful services. With pretexting, an attacker obtains information through a series of cleverly crafted lies. The scam is often initiated by a cyber criminal pretending to need sensitive information from a victim so as to perform a critical task. The attacker usually starts by establishing trust with their victim by impersonating coworkers, police, bank, and tax officials, or other persons who have a right to know authority. The pretexter asks questions that are required to confirm the victim's identity, through which they gather important personal data. All sorts of pertinent information and records is gathered using this scam, such as social security numbers, personal addresses and phone numbers, phone records, staff vacation dates, bank records, and even security information related to business locations. As stated earlier, the most popular social engineering attack types are the phishing and spear phishing scams. These campaigns typically utilize email or texting. Similar to baiting, quid pro quo attacks promise a benefit in exchange for information. This benefit usually assumes a form of service, whereas baiting usually takes the form of goods. One of the most common types of quid pro quo attacks that's come out in recent years is when fraudsters impersonated the U.S. Social Security Administration. These, fakes, these fake personnel contacted random individuals, informed them that there's been a computer problem on their end, and asked those individuals to confirm the Social Security numbers, all for the purpose of committing identity theft. It is important to note that attackers can use quid pro quo offers that are far less sophisticated. Earlier attacks have shown Office workers are more than willing to give away their passwords for a cheap pen or even a bar of chocolate. 
Developing an internal cybersecurity awareness campaign, which requires every worker to watch a 10 minute video and read a few slides, may be fairly easy to distribute company wide. But it will also fail to have much of an impact on the organization's actual defense capabilities. More interactive and engaging campaigns will be much more effective, but are difficult to administer to larger workforces. That is why we are strong believers that when implementing a cybersecurity training program, that you consider engaging a partner that specializes in this field. Later, we will dig deeper into what to, in what to look for when choosing your partner and their platform. But for now, let's explore the typical training experience. The first step in creating an effective training experience is to assess the level of your employee's current security education. This is typically achieved by the platform sending out emails that cover a breadth of topics. This will allow you to create a baseline of which topics require more attention than others. At this point, the employees may not be alerted of any issues. Once a baseline has been established, training becomes more scheduled and targeted. This may be in the form of emails or formalized training like videos or documentation. Having a one and done training regime will be very ineffective. Repetitiveness is key to keeping things front of mind. Therefore, throughout the preceding weeks and months, employees will be educated and tested on various subjects and threats. During this time, the team responsible for the cybersecurity awareness program will be provided with information as to how the employees are reacting to the fake attempts to dupe them. This team will then be able to identify who the repeat offenders are and work with them directly to change their habits. Please keep in mind that this training is not designed to publicly berate your employees. It's about changing their behaviors. Many people are aware that they may be doing something unsafe from a security perspective, but due to past experiences, feel that it is worth the risk. Security awareness training is not merely an education exercise. Rather, it can be a powerful tool that adds an additional layer of protection over your organization's most valuable data and systems. This means it's critical that your chosen training provider is able to effectively engage users and communicate information in a way that they understand. This is so that your employees walk away with more knowledge and know how to apply it in practice. When assessing training providers, ask for evidence of results that other organizations have experienced. You should also look for a security awareness training provider who wants to be your collaborative partner. Choose a company that uses an advisory approach and is committed to learning about your organization's needs. Inevitably, you will have some issues with the platform or want to talk to the provider. Not having a good support platform, being it via direct support or self-help through a knowledge base can be very frustrating and may even derail the training program. People have short attention spans and may not have a favorable outlook for corporate training. Overcome this with training created by security experts that is fun, engaging, and relevant. For everyday users, security awareness training should be targeted at helping people to build a broader understanding of what security crime is, the ways attacks occur, and what to do when they see something suspicious. Most employees don't need to be deep content experts but they do need to understand the diverse potential threats that could affect your organization. When assessing potential training partners, review the curriculum carefully to make sure it strikes a balance between a wide coverage of topics without getting bogged down in unnecessary technical detail. When it comes to cybersecurity, the pace of change is extraordinarily rapid. Cyber criminals are constantly on the lookout for new ways to exploit individuals and organizations and act in a highly sophisticated way in order to avoid detection. To ensure your employees are armed with current information about cybersecurity and alerted about contemporary threats, ask potential training partners about how frequently they refresh their content and how they ensure participants are kept up to date with new and emerging threats. Each employee must be able to relate to the content. Give people content that is specific to their roles and responsibilities. In every security awareness training session, participants will come with different levels of base knowledge about cybersecurity. Some will be learning about cyber threats and how to detect them for the first time, while others will be familiar with much of the content shared in each session. To keep your employees engaged throughout the training, consider a training partner that caters for a diverse spectrum of learning needs. For many employees, training can be viewed as another item on their to-do list that they need to squeeze into a already busy week. Organizations often find that training completion rates increase when training is delivered using flexible models such as a series of online modules that can be completed in bite-sized chunks. When choosing a training provider, think about how their delivery options are likely to suit your organizational context and employee preferences. 
Getting a pulse of your cybersecurity awareness training program is crucial in identifying its effectiveness and adoption level. A well-developed platform goes a long way in providing you with information with default or canned reports, but should also allow you to create customized reports tailored to your organization's needs. Dashboards will give you, at a quick glance, a 10,000-foot view of how the training is progressing. Ultimately, the platform would allow you to dig into more granular level within these dashboards. Dashboards work well with C-level staff as they do not need to weed through the finer details to get a perspective of the program. Most organizations have adopted cybersecurity awareness training as mandatory training and thus have incorporated it into their employee onboarding process. This moves the responsibility of this program away from the IT team and more towards the human resources team. A well-developed platform will allow an organization's human resources team to track the training, provide the employees with certificates of completion, and potentially import the data into their human resources information systems. This concludes today's session on cybersecurity awareness training. I would like to leave you with this final thought. The only way to secure a network is to completely close it off. But the whole point of the internet is to be an open network. In that case, we must accept that vigilance is excellence. Your network will never be bulletproof, but the more advocates that you create, the more your risk factor goes down. Cyber criminals are looking for the least trained, lowest common denominators when it comes to end users. By implementing cybersecurity training, you're creating the first and strongest line of defense. This is called the human firewall. Again, my name is Vince Andriani, service manager related to IT services here at The Answer Company. I'd like to thank you for attending this session and please look for more sessions related to IT services provided by The Answer Company. If you have any questions or would like more information, please reach out via email, direct, call directly in, or reach out to your account manager. Thank you.